Now, we've spoken quite a lot about um, quality management methods and quality processes and uh, principles and things like that. Now, the, the question is, what does this look like in an agile world? And what do we mean by agile? So let's go through an example of this. Um, for an agile, we'll take the, the standard so-called um, agile software development method that uses scrums. Now, I'm very aware there's lots of arguments about exactly how you do things, and um, I'm very aware there is uh, there are people who argue you, you actually have a, um, a front-end step where you, you do your basic uh, high-level architecture and your high-level requirements analysis uh, before you get into the sprints. And some people call that sprint zero, um, and some people simply don't do it at all. So we'll take all those arguments, and I'll look at an agile um, project or agile process of the sprint itself. Now we have a multifunction team and in any one sprint the team will do whatever is necessary to implement those tasks that have to be implemented in the sprint. So you can't say oh we will do an architecture and then we will do this and then we will do that. It won't happen like that. Um, there may be some um, design done and some uh, coding done and there may be some infrastructure done and some configuration done. You can't tell beforehand. Nevertheless, there's still something of a process to, to a overall sprint. All right? So the project is usually advanced through a series of sprints. That's normal. And each sprint implements some requirements, some task or other. Now the tasks are not always to develop software or modify software. The tasks could be simply to go and, and go and uh, set up an environment or something like that. The sprint will usually start with a review of the backlog. The backlog of items has to be reviewed to determine what are we going to do next because you've got a certain amount of capacity in that sprint and you need to review um, which are the highest priority items that are related together that you can implement in that review. Now, the reason why you do that is because these backlog items are not um, precisely specified. They're, they're approximately specified. And part of the sprint itself is to clarify those requirements, to get down to uh, sufficient specification or specific, sufficient clarity about them that you can estimate them and you can be confident that, yes, you know how to, to implement this. So the first thing you ought to do is to clarify the backlog item. Then the, the backlog item may have had a, um, a very approximate uh, estimate on it. Now your job is to make a much more accurate estimate of it. Now I think this is pr very important. Um, some time ago um, I did some, you know, I suppose you could say research, into why so many very experienced managers seem to get their estimates completely wrong. That is, the job would usually take about twice as long as they said. And when I looked into it, they were very good and very accurate at estimating the things that they thought of. Uh, so they would list out a whole lot of tasks, so I have to do this and I have to do this and I have to do this. Right? So they'd list all those out and they'd estimate all of those. And when it came to, to the post-mortem about it all, they were very accurate. What wasn't accurate was they just didn't think of everything. Now, this is a killer. So when you are expanding your backlog items, here is the opportunity to try and think about all of the things that you will need to do in order to get this backlog item done. And routinely, developers don't think about things that are not actually coding. They, they, so, you know, I have to set up the environment, I have to configure this, I have to install this tool, I have to go and set up the, the um, PC or whatever it is. You have to think of all those things and put estimates on those things. You then, um, generally, you allocate tasks to people. Um, this may be done before you do the estimates or after you've done the estimates, but, you know, somebody has to do them, so pe people have to be allocated. You might modify the existing system design, and this could be a first step. Uh, if you do, you're then going to have to review the design. You might implement the requirements by modifying the existing code, and uh, then you have to do some sort of um, uh, verification. 
um, and validation to determine that you've actually uh, you have actually implemented what you're supposed to be implemented and it works all right so that usually is you test the implemented code and regression tests the implemented code now each sprint may be different but there will be a general similarity across them all now and this is where we get interesting so your quality assurance in this agile world is achieved by at the moment um, in, in most agile environments that I've seen, quality assurance uh, seems to be achieved by expert judgment. All right? Because there are enough automated checks in the environment, the development environments themselves, and with the tools they use to achieve a um, sufficient level of quality for most purposes. Now, this was an interesting observation. If you look around now, you won't find too many uh, quality management specialists in a software development shop. And the reason is, you can get a good enough quality simply by using all the tools that are available. We have requirements management tools. We have um, um, configuration management tools. We have version control tools. We have build tools. We have software test tools. We have development environments. Um, we have a whole lot of automated reviewing that, that can be done, particularly to code, not so much to designs, but certainly to code. And all of these tools give us a pretty good level of quality. That's usually enough, but what if it's not? The challenges of agile development is that experienced developers are prone to confirmation bias. Now this doesn't make them unusual, all humans are, are prone to confirmation bias. That is, confirmation bias is um, the, the tendency to th seek evidence to support our, our beliefs. So if I've made some sort of a decision about, um, oh, let's pick an example I've heard of once before. Uh, maybe I want to buy a car and I decide um, this car is the best car and I'll buy this car. I will then to seek or notice information that supports my decision. So I'll look at positive reviews of that car and I'll look at the reviews and pick out things that were praiseworthy in that car and minimize uh, any um, less than praiseworthy uh, reviews. And I'll possibly overlook warnings within, within the review. This is a very normal process or normal uh, bias in people. Uh, we tend to confirm it. Um, now with software development, a software developer has thought about what the problem is and thought about the implementation and they have implemented some code and naturally when they finish they are going to believe that works, that's sufficient and that works. If they didn't believe that they wouldn't have stopped. So they will then look for evidence that that's correct. Now this is fairly subtle, they will, they will construct unit tests that show that it works. It's a very rare developer that constructs a unit test that shows it doesn't work, or even try, all right? So when it really has to work, and the, um, the activities in a sprint are whatever it takes, ensuring a appropriate quality assurance requires a matching level of QA expertise. So, this is not for beginners. If you're doing quality assurance, in an agile environment, you have to be at least as um, experienced and expert as the developers themselves. You have to know the area of quality assurance and all of its practices pretty well. You can't set up a standard quality assurance system anymore. There isn't such a thing uh, when the, um, the agile development is not standard at all. You can approximate a standard quality assurance system by matching each development activity with a QA activity. All right? So the guiding questions in, in um, your quality assurance uh, for agile development and development is how will you know you've done what you're supposed to have done? How will you know you've produced what was required? And how will you know each sprint activity achieves what it should? Okay, so you got to produce something. What was that something supposed to be? Is it? It was supposed to have been of uh, a certain level of quality characteristics. Is it? How would you know? 